Hey guys, we're here with a uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Getting this game to work, like recording wise, is kind of hard. Like it's pretty glitchy. That's actually intentional by the game developer, of course. <laughs> no. <laughs> what if it is? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me move my chair. I've been busy the last few days, but I'm free now. Uh, thought about recording Dong Gun Ralph of V3 today since it just came out, but I'm gonna wait for the weekend to do that since I'm home alone for a couple days this weekend so that's gonna be <coughs> all the time in the world to record so that's uh, lazy I, I thought that'd be here disaster uh, who's headphones okay agonizing oh, we're going Yuri right massacre fireflies oh let's how I uh, uh, don't ask me insight Unrestrained swimsuit. We gotta go swimsuit. Look, that's we got captive, despise, uh, Papa Makina. Is that you? <laughs> Disoriented, uh, friends, vitality, nope, sticky. What? How's how's it sticky? Uh, I, I. I don't know. I mean, <coughs> coughing a lot. I'm not sick though. It's like my. Don't. They just. Uh, I don't know how the point value works. If they even work. Like, we got a CG theory, but. Uh, you, you, you get what I mean. So I'm trying to make theirs not be zero, just in case. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. Got a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, horsey. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. Heh <laughs> Just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things, things with you, right? Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That's not like you at all. And my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why, th why that, all of a sudden? No reason, really. Just want to look at it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Ah, uh, ha, ha, ha. Tee hee. I knew it. Can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Ace Detective Horsey. So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're you're always hungry. So that only leaves one option. Ooh, ah! I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ha ha ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? Didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh, ah! I wasn't listening or anything. <laughs> it's just something in my book. Yuri! Tell her you see to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Siri. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. Frankly, after putting a, pulling a mischievous little shot like that, your suffering is fair enough. Retribution. Let me take a drink. Okay. Ah! Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got a little too absorbed into my book. Ooh. Ah ha ha. Really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. Yuri, right though. I did something bad and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside, devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but you wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for the cupcakes. So I didn't trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwap! Yeah! <laughs> How's that? 
Out of nowhere, something smacks her in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I was just going to give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. Ah, ha, ha. Natsuki. That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <clears throat> Sorry, suddenly clasps her hand over her mouth. Bit my tongue! <laughs> you're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite out of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really too good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. So I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sarah gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie stone hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um. Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. She's dark. She's evil. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club you. Uh, where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. Oh, she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <gasps> <laughs> I want to be surprised. It's probably more desirable than all of us combined. Hehe, <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry. Super sorry. Ah, there you are. Didn't mean to be late. Hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you guys talking about? Monica puts clue glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. But I'll do you up anyway. Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Ha 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 ha. That makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I also don't know where you play music at all, as as well, Monica. Ah, <laughs> I don't really. I kind of just started recently. Always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little better, they will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Hoisy. Monica smiles sweetly. I want to protect that smile. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Haha, <laughs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So I didn't miss anything, did I? N no, not really. Just to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her, anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. I want to click on OBS to see it, like how long I've been recording. We're like 5-10 minutes. But uh, I'm scared I'll break the game. Sayori somehow ended up finishing, somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey Yuri. Eh? Ah. Suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Ah, no. I was kind of waiting for you. Ah, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. There's one thing you that can make my reading time in here any better. It's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. Follow and watch as she retrieves a small watch water pitcher from the shelf, the kind of with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me a water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. Kettle! I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. Simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, 
might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Huh? Where are you two off to? Eh? We're just, you're just gonna go make some tea, so. Something you realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's, that's kind of a one person job, isn't it? That's. Monica, please mind your own business for once! Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping with helping involve horsey in club activities? Eh? Eh? Their mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, let's go, horsey. Uh, Yuri quickly quickly exits the room, and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. Spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri... I just... Something about the way she said that. Made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Or oh, see. How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. We can always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah. No. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? Can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say. Ah, um, Yuri lifts her head. Where is he? Really? Oh, like big friends? What? Oi, is that. Is that good? Or bad? <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. Like being friends with you, too. You're kind of awkward saying something like that. I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway, uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Or see, do you like oolong tea? Ah, uh, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature of the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. Shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even though I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, uh, perhaps I will. Mary fetches the teapot and I begin measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. I must be in a good mood now. Is that so? That's letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking. I just said that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for me to do. But it's you who's around anyway. Is that good? Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, horse. We've known each other like two days. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep this up. Keep up with this. Why don't Yuri pour a cup of tea, tea for each of us? Or see, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? What's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. Can we end with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk? Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. Just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to pain. I wonder why. There's probably two problems with your back. If, if you look at my cursor, you can see me circling something. Should I make two circles? <laughs> is that so? Wonder why that is. It's most likely because my. Uh, my your posture, right? Oh, he sunched over like that while eating. Yes, I have terrible eating posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Every night, and then sit against the wall, teacups at her side. As if in sync, we assume the same reading posture as last position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer together. Can't see too well. Our sides closer until our shor shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yours is always kind of cute, but she's being less apprehensive. It's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Mary hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally, accidentally touch your chest! <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri has noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. She has to know, right? I <laughs> use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally managed to relax a little. Put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. 
Or you can let go of the books and finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well... I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. That's what I was thinking when I mentioned it. I was like, how, how, okay, but what if you get the book dirty? Because, you know, you're already holding it with one hand. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it. But as I result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. Take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. And I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if the situation was completely natural. Well, that means I can't stop here. Abby handsomely placed the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. It... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Moisey... Sorry? Guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah... That's all it was. Yeah, then... You don't need to stop or anything. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Or tries to return the book. Like, return to the book or return the book? Return to the book, okay. But I can tell by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart's bounding. Nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did, it, how did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. Notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. Here's my arm. Ah, uh, like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. Take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. Feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone! Wah! Ah! Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Or see, so you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, alright? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spells are roughly broken. I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. Pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. Get the feeling that this is something neither of, the, neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Okay, Monica. Hey again, Horsey. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Haha, <laughs> I want to count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. Give my poem to Monica. Alright, this one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's just a, like a light turns on inside her. Mm hmm? Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that hand of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish I shouldn't keep as much to herself. But still, defending her like that. Must be pretty into her. Ooh, she knows! You completely misunderstood. Haha, <laughs> calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already... What? No. Wait, really? Yeah, fictional one, anyway. Oh. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. Just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. There's... Wait, is, is that still... Like, so I have a wife, and if I got a girlfriend, I'd be cheating on my wife. So, yeah, that's wrong. That's, that's morally wrong. I was just saying. But anyway, what are you in my poem, right? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless... Cafonum? Cacophony? <laughs> a meaningless noise. A noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable, like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust, an endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Ah, uh, what was that? Huh. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? 
Load me. Load. Oh, what if there's a what if there's a load slot? Like it was like. Oh, the poem was called "Save Me." That <laughs> that, that would have been. I don't know what to expect. What's the what's the choice gonna be? Is it gonna be subtle? Like, well, like, I don't know if I'd call that subtle. I guess it's just the way I write. Sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the, the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. If there was a thing to load there, that would have been 10 out of 10. That would have been amazing. <laughs> kind of like playing with the space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. I'm still expecting this to get meta. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short it makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's, what it's about. Though. Maybe the choice is that none of them want to be in a romantic relationship with you. They just want you to be in the club. Oh my god. Oh my god! That better not be the twist! It's still hard for me to put to what it's about though. <laughs> so sometimes asking me what a poem is about it isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with a reader. Just putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected might may happen. But is this stuff even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. She knows. Let's see what you've written for today. Mary stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. You like it? Or see. This one might be even better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just as dress, telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. It did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think about before she speaks, so I offer her patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. Probably sounds really stupid. But seeing someone motivated by my writing just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. Or do they only write for myself? Besides, people would just laugh at me. You really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. You have any close friends? Drug said to you, I don't have any close friends. <laughs> Wonder why. Anyway. You want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scattering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a... Was that wondering? Oh, hold on. That's ordinary. Unordinary human. Okay. Cursive is... Cursive is hard. <laughs> Give the raccoon a piece of bread, but some conscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon and urge. The moon increments its phase, increments its phase, and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light light that glistens in the eyes of the raccoon friend. So the moon increments, the, that means it's the next day, right? Slice the bread, fresh out it, fresh herself. The raccoon becomes excited. Perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto a, the newly sat satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken a, to following me. You see that we've gotten quite a, used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Eh, hold on. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic... Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread. I feel myself again. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault. I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. You're right. That's right. I wonder. The better would not be. I better not be the raccoon. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using this poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, but I can at face value. Then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, 
I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Be because they're embarrassing. People would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Horsey? Well, I read Japanese porn games, of course. I mean, that's that's a joke. Visual novels are not. I mean, they can be. And I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. Might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening. There really aren't many people like you. WHY DID MONICA TELL US TO SAVE THE GAME? <laughs> I'm not okay with that. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. Never thought I'd feel so comfortable sharing my writing. But now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. You're to, you're to thank for that. It's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Uh, wait, did Sayori Natsuki last time? So let's do Natsuki Sayori. Huh. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. I can't say it's any better either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Uh, anything that isn't a train, a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that's a compliment. Haha, <laughs> glad to see somebody recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's uh... Something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's problem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess... If you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how could someone uh... So... Fluffy, spend so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she'd sing the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But well, she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me and took me to the nurse. Try not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has lots of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. Doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. Doesn't matter if she keeps it private. Doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone, it's girls. She's girls. The world is better off without spidey lovers. And I want to tell everyone. Okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was w way too short. I was just warming up. I really didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. You know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. You want it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares about what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone, it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, I mean, liking spiders is too bad, though. Look, if you like spiders out there, just unsubscribe. You Are you guys okay? You, you okay in there? <laughs> huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? What? Oh, so the order does matter. Yeah, she said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I should have saved! I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about these things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty stu- weird. So I wouldn't doubt she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Ooh, it's not like a judger or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding- 
what if what if this is a let's so let's say going through yuri's thing gives you a flag and then you save like you load a save but you still have that flag so that we can better both of their relation i my latest save is too far back but i would totally try that i guess i should try not to be so mean to her if she feels insecure about her weird behaviors, behaviors and stuff, I mean, I always hate people who make me feel insecure. You already made me feel insecure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's try it. Um, we need to focus on... Universe? Yeah. Atone. Ma Who's marriage? Theory. Termination. Infernal. Empty. What? She's empty? Branding. Tragedy. Kawaii. No, I'm not putting that in there. Lust. Uh, boop. <laughs> Philosophy. Green Cloud. Unrequited. What? Oh no. Say where you're at incoming. Uh, ambient? Infallible. Pain. What? Unrestrained. Extraordinary. Agonizing. I want to check how far into the recording we are, but I'm scared. OBS. <laughs> I'm okay with doing like a 40 minute one though. Save. Okay, let's do Monica's first. I want to see that writing tip again just to see if it's changed. Don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Wait, we can wait until we read your poem. Okay, okay, maybe there's an issue. Uh, let's go through Monica's because it's just. Let's do Natsuki's. Oh, the dialogue's different. I like the last one better. Oh, because we didn't get any flags. So you're a little more daring with this one. We don't need to read this. Let's see if he mentions Yuri. No, he does. Okay. Maybe I'm going a bit too hard on this theory, but I believe. I believe in the. The theory that believes in me doesn't work. You made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, sounds like she learned her lesson. Well, I'd say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important. I don't want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. Ooh! I like this one, Hoysi. It has some nice feelings in it. I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I yeah, didn't like them both. <laughs> I, I, I got a lot of fur flags, though. That's not very helpful, you know? Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. That's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the, this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh... Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Ah, uh, you wanna write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. Or you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. 
Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Is there going to be a truck? Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Uh, trucks equal death. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? Like bittersweet? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like it when things are happy and things are, that are sad. Happy and sad? Can't see where you like something. Can't see you liking something sad, theory. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help you get the rain. rain can help give the rain cloud a hu little hug. Make a make a nice happy rainbow. Sorry, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It is. Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Horsey. Should go write that down then. You're gonna write poem now, okay? Bottles. Pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rub rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. Put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all my, all my other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle, all in a row. My collections make me a lots of friends. Each bottle a star that to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes the bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. Blow dashed off my bottle caps. Doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? Frantically pull them from the shelf, one after one. At one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my foot, feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in the shines, all over the floor. They're supposed to be for my friends, my friends here aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Say, are you, are you okay? Holy crap! Sorry, did you really get this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna get the best poem ever? Yeah, but I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being so cheerful. Oh, well, never mind. Thinking too hard about it. Point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Ah, uh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Your writing is like magic. And I'm pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah! Your writing's the best! And I keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. So always always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it or more than a week later. Whenever this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in your eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Okay, everyone! We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone can come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. So, Sayori has been working hard on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry. Thought you already heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Pardon me? Per performing? P P Monica! Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So we're just putting it all on, putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Eh <laughs> Sayori, Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Natsuki. Could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Guess I kinda overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. 
We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. The more people who perform, the better we will be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! So, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right! It's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with the others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if it takes... If all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and you're setting a poem, then I know you can do it, too. Let's get Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. Guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ooh. Okay, fine. Guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri de dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expected faces. Uh, I guess they don't really have a choice. Aha! <laughs> that's everyone! You're the best, Yuri! This club is seriously gonna be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is way too sudden. Well, if you can't reset your problem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start up I'll start off to help everyone feel a bit, little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of the poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. A clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites. Bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she something unnatural? I glance around me. She's done it before because she's done this entire game hundreds of times. In a time loop where I don't know. Sorry looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That that was good, Monica. Haha, <laughs> thank you very much. I was hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. Wah! You're a spider up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of, the, of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she respectfully refused to do this. Why is she suddenly start putting out in so much effort? Siri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform, transform into a sharp syllables of a fierce, confident, and, co and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in the structure that she announces with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside it, inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri stamps back into reality. That's a song, right? Like, a rap snap back and do I don't do, I don't listen to music <laughs> I it's up to me to save the situation the first to start applauding everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves so that we didn't want to applaud for her but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten as we applaud Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat Yuri that was really good thank you for sharing looks like Yuri's down for the count okay I guess I'm next then Siri hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Metal. Ah. Ah ha ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Hehehe. <laughs> Siri. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so I'll come out of the best with that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Siri begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice has been made as a perfect match. The poem wasn't aimlessly cheer cheery like Sayori is. Serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew th through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Ehehe, <laughs> even Hoisey liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. 
Either words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a bit more force behind it, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. Like, well, that's... I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> the next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges, challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Horsey. It's not like I can comp compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Horsey lower everyone's standards a little before I- <laughs> Oh, wow! <laughs> Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. Might as well get it over here with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. Stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put an energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really good as, as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that I'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then. I just leave to do Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. Going. Oh. I guess just one. I had to. <laughs> I had to call that session there. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna upload as this tonight. It was 45 minutes. It's good enough. I mean, the next the scene won't have ended in the five, ten more minutes for upload, but I mean, and that's the best I can do. <laughs> I'll see you guys tomorrow with some more Doki Doki Literature Club. Uh, I'll see you guys then. Bye.